Given the sudden decline in housing prices, uncertainty across the market, you might be thinking that this year is going to be crisis. There's been headlines of the mortgage cliff that's coming up. So is it going to be Armageddon for the property market in Australia or is there a silver lining? In this video, we're going to break down everything you need to know about the upcoming mortgage cliff, how high interest rates are likely to go and what's going to happen in the next 12 months. So let's start from the top. What is the mortgage cliff? During the COVID-19 pandemic, the RBA saw they basically emergency cash rate setting. So they dropped the cash rate to 0.1%. It was a historic low. And this led to a lot of home buyers getting into the market, thinking it's a lot cheaper. It's significantly cheaper to buy a property than rent. And they jumped in. Add to that background, at the same time, the Reserve Bank governor went out and said, well, interest rates aren't going anywhere. They're not going up at least until 2024. Also, we want some stability in the market. So they put out a bunch of cheap fixed rates there which led to people fixing in for two to three years where the interest rate was set. It does not change at that point in time, around 2%. It was super low. And logic showed that fixed rate interest rate take up, it went massive. It was almost three times the previous level. So it went from 15% of all home loans before the pandemic where people look at fixed rates up to 64% of home buyers opting for fixed rates. Now, Two years later, a whopping number of loans are actually coming off this fixed rate period, which is leading to this mortgage cliff. So a massive $270 billion in loans are coming off these ultra low 1.99, 2% fixed rates to the current mortgage market today, which is causing people to freak out. I got a phone call the other day from Sandra who had fixed her rates a couple of years ago. She had heard the headlines and said, is my interest rate going to go 8, 9%? I saw it in the news. I heard it in the media. What's going to happen? This Leads to the next question, how high interest rates going to go and how do you start preparing for this? At the end of 2022, the official cash rate hit 3.1% and the eight months leading to that point in time, we saw consecutive rate rises, rate rise after rate rise, where we saw 3% increase in the cash rate in 2022 alone. That brings the average variable rate as of today to about 5%. So you can see that's a huge shock for anyone that locked in their fixed rate for two years at say 1.99% now jumping up nearly 3% increase in their loan repayment interest rate, which is going to have a significant impact on the bottom line. Now, in terms of where the viewable rates are going, we've had a number of forecasts and quite often, a lot of the times the forecasters even themselves get it wrong. So I think you've got to try and understand what's going to be happening in the market. Westpac, ANZ, they're saying that the cash rate could peak at 3.85%, which means we could see another three rate rises. Now, they're probably in the middle ground saying 3.6%. Commonwealth, very optimistic, saying one more rate hike, and then that's it. I think the key here is we're not going to know if any of these predictions are right until we look back on it. And it's all going to really come down to inflation. So inflation, we saw peak at the end of December at that high 7.3 quarters of a percent. And the Reserve Bank will be eagerly watching to see what happens with inflation, especially as a number of fixed rates are coming off. The family budgets are going to feel a pinch, which means spendings could dramatically reduce. And once the Reserve Bank gets inflation in that target band, which is between 2 to 3%, we'll start to see them take the foot off the pedal with interest rate hikes and potentially even some easing, which has also been predicted that we could see some rate cuts as early as 2024. I think the key takeaway here is at the most bearish side of things, looking at Westpac and ANZ's call, they expect potentially another three quarters of a percent. But like Nathan said earlier, if your interest rate's at around 5%, at the moment, you could end up paying 5.75 to 6%. When you're doing your repayments, you can calculate it based on that as a bit of a worst case scenario. There are some fixed rates at the moment as well. If you are looking for certainty around 5.5% for one year fix. Again, if you want that certainty in the short term, it could make sense to look at those fixed rates. A big question on everyone's mind is, should I wait for the drop? Is it going to happen later in the year? And interestingly, APRA, the bank's regulator came out and said that they're ready to step in should the bank start to choke off on their credit supplies. We saw during the pandemic that the bank regulator came out and increased the bank serviceability buffer. In other words, when you were taking a loan out at those ultra low 2% rates at that point, the bank standard variable rates were around 5.5% at that time. And the bank's regulator said they had to add a 3% buffer. So they were assuming interest rates would get to 8.5%. APRA has come out literally this week and said that they'd be happy to review the servicing buffer and potentially stimulate the property market if the Reserve Bank and the rates started to slow things down too much. As much as there are some doomsday sayers out there, and they were before the pandemic, saying property prices are going to drop, they end up going up by 20%. They're saying a similar thing now. The banks regularly could easily come back out and light a bit of a fire, a bit of a match under the property market to help stimulate things 
if they start to see it drop off later in the year. So you're probably asking yourself the question, what does this all mean? If I'm currently fixed in, how much of an impact is this going to have on my bottom line? To give you a rough idea, if you currently got a $500,000 mortgage, it's estimated that your payments will actually increase by about one third. If you're paying about $2,000 per month at the moment, repayments, if they go on a variable rate, as of now, will increase by about $1,288 per month, which is a significant impact. One third increase on your mortgage per month in what is already a very tight market from groceries being increased, fuel increases, electricity costs, the cost of living having a bearing. And given so many people took up fixed rates two years ago, when we start to see those fixed rates come up, it will be interesting to see what happens with inflation. How do I start to prepare? I think firstly, to your point earlier, do a budget, jump on our website. We've got a mortgage calculator there. Calculate it based on what if your repayments go to 6%, 6.5%, say at the extreme end of some of the predictions there. And you can work out, it can potentially start to cut back or taper back on now to be able to get comfortable with those repayments. The next thing to think about is contact your broker. Here at Hunter Galloway, we're mortgage brokers and deal with people Australia-wide. You want to touch base with your broker at least two months prior to your fixed rate maturing as that will give you enough time to plan ahead and create a bit of a battle plan. Another thing we've seen a little bit lately is looking at consolidating debts. You might have a car loan, you might have personal loans, credit cards, all sorts of things out there. So putting that into your home loan can make sense in some situations. Now, without getting too technical, putting in a car loan that might take seven years to repay and sticking on your home loan for 30 years isn't always the best idea. But for some people, having all your debts consolidated in one place, having one repayment to focus on a month can help build in that buffer and get through what could be a tight time. The other thing you can think about is extending your loan term out. If you're currently on a 25-year loan period, extending it out to 30 years will help you reduce your repayments. Once again, these aren't great strategies if you're trying to pay down your loan faster. However, if you are going to find that you're going to struggle to meet your commitments, given such a high jump and you're feeling that you're having a bit of rate shock, this can be a good temporary measure just to get yourself back into the swing of things and getting used to the loan repayments. The last result you can also think about is switching to an interest only loan. Once again, it's not a good idea because you're not getting used to the repayments or paying down the debt. But once again, if you've got extenuating circumstances and need some temporary relief, these sort of things can help, but aren't certainly good ideas in that you won't pay down your loan faster and you'll also pay more interest over the term of the loan. Lastly, you can also look at refinancing. Different banks have different deals. When you potentially bought your home a couple of years ago, you may have paid lenders mortgage insurance and the banks actually offer different discounts if you have a 20% deposit, a 30% deposit, et cetera. But your property price might have gone up over the last few years. Your current bank might say, forget it. Nathan, I'm sorry, no more discounts. We think you're still at a 90% LVR and your property price may have gone up in value. That's the benefit of refinancing. We can look at other banks. They sometimes have cashbacks to help offset the cost of switching lenders and can help you save on the interest rate overall. I think the key here to understand here, guys, is that everyone's situation is unique and one strategy might work for one person, but might not necessarily work for someone else. So it's important to work with a mortgage broker like ourselves, where we can help you strategize and find solutions that are going to work that are unique to your situation. Here at Hunter Galloway, we're mortgage brokers and get loans approved. So if you're looking for a great mortgage broker, needing assistance with refinancing, purchasing a home, or even investing, get in touch with us at huntergalloway.com.au or call us on 1300 08 065 and we'll see you next time.